Hello there. Seraphim17 once again. This is my Give Me God of War walkthrough. And this is the Magni and Modai boss fight. So, this is a really polarizing boss fight. And did you see what just happened then? That is an example of the grace period you're given with hitboxes. On a previous video, when I dodged and got the slow motion from a troll, from an ogre, sorry, I ended up taking a hit during it. Just then, I stood on his sword's hitbox in the early activation period, and I didn't get hit. However, I have been hit by doing exactly what you just witnessed, so there is definitely a sweet spot in that. Be very careful. But this, this boss fight has three checkpoints. Every time you take off two chunks of life, you're given a checkpoint, pretty much. The only reason you're ever going to remember this fight is because of the final phase and because of the gimmick that exists. Fundamentally, both of these enemies have really easy attacks to punish, to dodge, and to understand. Together, they can kind of match it up in unison and do some tricky stuff, but even then, you're not going to have too much trouble. This is not a difficult fight, at all. However, on that final phase, you have to kill them both at the same time, or they will regenerate and recover, and you'll have to continue fighting them. And that is where things get difficult, because on this difficulty, enemies take chip damage, so you have to hit them a lot. So not only do you have to hit them a whole bunch, but when one of them can go down and heal magically if you don't kill the other one in time, it means you have to have both of them at a very comparable level of HP to get the final part of the battle. And everything leading up to that point is pretty simple and pretty easy. And if it didn't exist as a mechanic, it wouldn't be a problem. But it does. And it's really tricky. And do you see Magni's uh, bar draining right now? See how it's draining his stun meter as I'm beating up this other dude? That is your time limit. Your time limit is the time it takes a full stun bar to drain to zero before the other guy will pick himself up and heal himself. If you can get the other guy down to the same HP threshold, you'll be okay. If you don't, you have to continue fighting and you elongate the battle. The principle of this fight is really simple. And then this is kind of just this weird cinematic moment that's kind of maybe emphasizing the Spartan phalanx and, you know, the bond between father and son. And I don't really know what this part is, but I think it's kind of stupid. However, you got to do it because you do it three times. And then thus begins the second phase. So... As the boss just signified then, he's now powered up his sword, so now his sword has access to some different moves, and so does his buddies. So both of them now are going to have a slightly expanded moveset, and the ability to do a little bit more elemental hijinks. But it's still intrinsically the same kind of fight, and you can stun both of them with the activation of the, the crow manoeuvre, you can stun them with Tears Revenge, you can stun them with that axe buff that I missed, you can stun them in a lot of great ways. So dealing big chunks of damage can be fine, it's just you need to make sure that the other boss is getting damaged equally as well. And it'll come to a point where you cannot tap, shoot arrows with the boy, because if you do, you'll end up stunning somebody and it will ruin your potential of getting to the next phase. So you really do need to, to moderate what you're doing. And you'll notice, I dodged that guy and instead of punishing him, I'm punishing his brother in the slow motion. Because the slow motion doesn't freeze the world, it slows the enemies, so you can use it. And this guy is very susceptible to guard breaks. Whenever he taunts, guard break him. Because if you attack him, he's got a lot of nasty counters that he can do if you get too aggressive. He has a really quick, like, guard stun, and he also has the ability to hit the ground and do chip damage to you, which is really stupid. But almost everything in this fight can be blocked. Use that to your ability. Right now, the other guy's throwing a ball of energy towards me. And that's got a bit of an AoE, so, so watch yourself with that. The only move that Hammer Guy has that's even remotely annoying and worth your time is that stupid electric beam move he does in the third phase. Everything else is kind of standard and not... Like, this is bullshit too. You can't stop that. Why couldn't I stop that? It's so dumb. Stuff like that is where this game really just misunderstands what makes high-level gameplay. It truly is. So this is interesting too, the, the team-up attack. So the team-up attack is pretty much a one-shot. It does incredible damage, but it has a big weakness that might not be really obvious to you, but once I tell you how to do it, it is. So when he throws, um, I think when Magni throws Modi into the sky, you can sh throw your axe at him and get a nice stun on him and do a decent bit of damage, and it will completely neutralize the attack. 
And it's one of those things where you don't really think to do it until you do, and then you realise it's, it's, it's spot on. However, if you miss, and you can miss, it's not a, an easy throw, it's not difficult, but it's not easy, you'll die. So there comes these wonderful moments of, do you throw the axe or do you dodge? And the best way to dodge that move is to run towards it. Run towards the guy who threw him in the air and run behind him. Of course, if you've got good distance and a path behind you, just turn around and run or roll backwards. But because of the, the radius of the move and the nature of you being trapped in corners in this fight, just run towards him and into the empty space behind him and it'll never hit you. But of course, if you can, throwing the axe is going to give you damage, and damage is really important. In this phase, you'll get faked out once, and then they'll attack. So wherever the red first glints is not where the attack's coming from. And here is the super bullshit electric move that you just saw that guy do. The way to stop it is to get the Atreus to hit him with the bow, and here comes the throwing attack. So boom, see the chunk that that did to Modai? Really powerful. Then I'm going to stun him with my birds, and then I'm going to proceed to hit... Uh, Magni with as many executioner cleaves as I can into Tears Revenge. Uh, and traditionally, I would run in and hit him with my fists while that was happening, while he stun locked to get extra damage. But in this particular run, I didn't for whatever reason, because I'm trying to, you know, share the damage. Here's the stupid electricity that can be blocked. The only fear here is is when the other guy comes to swing at you. If he does that while the electricity beam is on your body, you have to double tap dodge and get the roll. If you do not roll, you will get hit every time. And be very careful doing what I did just then. Never do what I did just then. There's no way on this planet that I wanted that, but it's what I got. Never meet an attack with a guard break. Because it just simply will trade more times than it will win. If you do win, you got lucky. Uh, the move that Magni did just then is a big circular AoE. Uh, it's really easy to dodge. It's really well telegraphed. It takes forever to do. If you get hit by it, it's your own fault. Uh, the, I don't know if there's a way to stop him from doing it or stun him when he's in it. Maybe try throwing the axe, but I think I've done it and he didn't do anything. So here's the double team. There's the axe throw. Building stun on both of them. I'm using blue arrows in this phase because the blue light arrow enables Atreus to cast more stun. And uh, I'm just trying to do it to hopefully build up their stun bars to, to give me a chance. Here it comes. Both of those moves are blockable, so make sure you do so. But this is really the part of the game when I started to get fundamentally disappointed with every boss in it. Because I just don't think they're very good. And additionally, in a fight such as this, when you stun one of them, there was no reason for there not to be a ridiculous, awesome grab animation that implemented all kinds of crazy cinematography. But there isn't. So instead, you stun them, they go down on the knees, you can't do anything to them, and then they get back up, for, like, healed. It's just lose-lose. And in a game that is legendary for its ridiculous, over-the-top, ultra-violent grabs, you would think they would be capable of better than fuck all, right? I was so sad at this fight. And it's hard, too. Because it's all about this. It's all about playing like a bitch and hitting the right one. And then you always get the one you don't want when you're trying to hit the one you do want. And it's just a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. And it's not because it's hard or because it's, it's taxing. It's because if you if you don't hit them both equally, they heal. It's so fucking lazy, dude.